So, suppose you're lost in the French countryside and you don't quite know where you are. What would you use? You've got your phone on you. Would you look up your uh, GPS coordinates? And would you go and give that to the local emergency services? Would you be prepared and have some sort of a map with you? Or would you have a proprietary system on your mobile phone that uses a simple system of all three words? What I'm talking about is a system called What Three Words that is developed in the UK. And the idea of What Three Words is a system that covers the world in a grid of three metre by three metre squared with a unique to a certain area set of three words. There are repetitions within the system, but the idea is they're meant to be thousands of miles apart, so there's no confusion. What three words is meant to encompass that simple system? Because there can be confusion with people's dresses. There can be difficulties as not everybody has a street address and postal addresses and postcodes can be very vague. So it's often hard for emergency services and delivery drivers to find the location. And with this in mind, what three words has been increasing its reach by encouraging emergency services to use their system for free. So why would what three words encourage the emergency services to use the system? Well, for a simple reason. When someone calls the emergency services, they go, oh, what's your location? Have you downloaded what three words? And the person goes, no, I'll download it. Gets the location from a mapped GPS sat nav. And they get the what three words address. The idea is they give it to that address to the operator and that can pin down where that person is. And that's a lovely idea. But there's a slight problem. What three words claims are not entirely accurate and a security researcher called Andrew Tiernan discovered this with a friend that instead of being thousand miles apart often these three word repetitions can actually be within five to ten kilometres apart depending on where it is and there's a lot of synonyms used and words that are plural used so there's an element of confusion that can happen and then of course there's the fun of, say, you're, you're like me and a bit Scottish and have an accent, confusion of with how words are produced. Because if you try and see your um, location into its voice recognition app, there's a lot of fun that can happen with that. Right, screen recording and I'll record on my phone. So, the admiral's in a public house in a place called Finechty which is spelled Findochty, so make of that what you will. So it has three words in it, which is disco, spurring and spurted. Disco, spurring, spurted. Okay, so disco, spurring, spurted, disco, spurring, sparring spurned and disco sparring spurted and none of them are the admirals in infinity so we'll try again now disco spurring spurted okay so disco springs batted disco springs battling disco springs batted so I'll try to in a phone voice again. Disco spurring spurted. No, that's still not done it. I did it early, early and I thought it would work, but not this time. So that's what it said. Disco spring spurted. Disco's spring spurted. And disco springing spurted. So we'll, we'll try another one. We'll try for Bullfiddle Rock, which is nearby. Enigma, stylist, coat. Oh, wow. I'll need to say that again. 
itches hereby stylus. So that's that's gone wrong. We'll we'll give that another chance there. So Enigma stylist coat. No, that's not quite done it either. So let's come up with Enigma Stylus Court. Enigma Stylistic Court or Enigma Stylus Court. Now, I'll type it in just so you can see that this is for both it will work as well. Enigma Stylist Court. Yes, I did mean that. That's not working, but yeah, if you type an Enigma stylus quote, you'll get near Parnoki and it'll be marked as Bow Fiddle Rock. Trying what three words with cake, cereal and bus. Cake, cereal, bus. Oh, yes. So that's kick serious boss, kick seriousness nosh, and kick serious boss. So final one. Um, I'd started it with banana arm breaks, and uh, let, let's be a little fair. Um, no address was found in the database for that. So that's nice, no? But I'll try a voice search anyway. <coughs> Banana arm breaks. <laughs> yeah. So banana alarm bricks, banana alarmed bricks, bananas alarm bricks. So it still tried to come up with the thing, even though, strictly speaking, for the three words I did type, there wasn't a database entry for it. Now, with any functional system, there's a element of people who want to retro-engineer that functionality because the idea of using a simple set of, of words is, is pretty awesome if you're not very keen on using things like plus codes or OS map codes. An alternative um, open source version was called What Three Words? And What Three Words got rather litigious about it because they want to protect their IP. And what it meant was that earlier this year, a security researcher had legal threats put against him because he provided a copy of what three words to the very researchers who'd discovered this issue with what three, three words. So I'll put the links in the description below so you can read more on that because these issues, as bad as they are, are bad enough. But Aside from the fact that it's not a good idea for the emergency services to be using a less than optimal system, I have a very real problem with our public services using proprietary applications. I'm a big fan of the free software you know, campaigns for public money and public code. I believe that if you're being funded from public donations or from our government, the taxpayer in any way, you should be ensuring that the systems you use have accessible code. The code should be either free software, it should be open source software, we should be able to look at it. We should be able to copy it and reuse it for our own means because we've paid for the use of that system ultimately. So it should be available for us. Plus, uh, with the issues with what three words repeating some of their word assignments quite close to each other in some places, this could cause life or death situations. When you have proprietary software, there's no guarantee you can examine what happened with that software to cause that error. So say if, if someone who calls in an emergency gives the wrong code either through operator error because they can't understand what the person's saying, directs emergency services to the wrong location and someone dies. What's going to happen at public inquiry? 
Are the public going to get to have an idea? Are we going to be able to choose our own experts to have a look at that code? Is that person going to be put under an NDA? We're not going to understand what fully happened if, if the worst ever happens, if that's the case. Now, at the moment, what three words allows the emergency services to use that software for free? Because they're trying to build market share. They're trying to get everybody used to using their mobile application and they're aiming for it to be installed in places like our sat-navs and for businesses to license access to their API. So, it's not ideal. It's a good idea, but we already have open source um, applications out there. We have um, open street maps. We have Google Plus codes and People make the argument that using what three words is simpler than learning um, ordinate survey grid coordinates. It's easier than um, using GPS coordinates. And I don't like that argument because it means we're failing people in terms of their education. When I was in Primary 5, that was one of the first things I learned was to how to read a map. So you shouldn't be going out in our wilderness without understanding how to read a map. You should be out there with your map, you should be learning to use things like compasses and how to, you know, how to orienteer yourself when you're out on a hike because these things are important. You need to be able to know where you are in terms of landmarks because you might have to tell the emergency services about that later. And there's certainly at least one emergency service to Scottish Mountain Rescue who are not recommending use of this app. We should be able to ask our public bodies to open up their systems to us so we can inspect them if we want to, so we can get more information. We can understand how those public bodies run themselves and their systems if we want to. Now not every citizen is going to want to investigate this. But for those that do, for those that want to, you know, do the other part of Bentham's Panopticon and say, how do these public bodies work? Because they have our taxpayers' money. We should be able, as ordinary citizens, to examine those systems. Security researchers should not be being threatened by IP lawyers to find weaknesses within a system that's being used by our emergency services, by our charities. I think it's immoral for proprietary providers to use our public services as free advertising and as cash cow because we've got no guarantee that they won't charge our services in the future or that what happens if they go bust we've tied into these proprietary services.